This is the Rusted Willow and my name is Tammy. This is where we do high-end DIYs, thrift flips, and trash to treasure. So let's get started. All right, guys, I don't know if you remember where I flipped this little stool that turns into a chair or chair that turns into a stool. But my stepmom picked this up uh, for $3 at a thrift store or garage sale, I believe. And um, I made this over the summer. So then one of my, and this is what it looked like after I got done. So then one of my viewers requested me to make her two of these little chairs that turn into stools or stools that turn into chairs. And I explained to her that I'm not a furniture builder. I don't know how to do that, but um, we figured it out. We made a pattern off of the original little chair. And here's my husband just showing you like how he did this. And um, we're going to show you how we built these two little chairs and stools. And so here we go. He is just marking the sides. We used pine boards and you want to make sure that they are pretty wide. And also you need to cut them a certain way. I remember that you have to cut them a certain way um, in the grain. Otherwise, when you go to drill the holes, they will not, it will splinter. So it will not drill out correctly. So I am just using my bandsaw that Viver sent me, and um, I love this thing. It worked really well. The only thing is I'm just not, you need to go slow. So this, this is actually sped up quite a bit, and my husband's given me pointers, and I am not quite good at it very, <laughs> I'm not very good at it quite yet. Um, so we did have to take these sides to the belt sander and sand them down smooth. And here, I, and I'm like, what am I doing? Like literally, I couldn't have cut that more crooked <laughs> if I tried. Well, maybe I could have, I don't know. So now I'm just cutting the little boards for the back of the chair. And one thing to remember when cutting, um, with your circular saw is you need to make sure that you know whether you're cutting on the inside of the line or the outside of the line because that makes a difference because of the thickness of the actual blade and those were exactly 11 inches that we cut those so then my husband cut these out and he made um he made the stencils, not the stencils. He made the pattern for the sides and then he cut these out. And now he's just making sure that it is actually the correct size. And he is marking the holes where they go. And then once he marks the holes where they go, he puts the boards back together so that he can drill them both at the same time. And I guess he was camera shy because he is turning his back to the camera. <laughs> now he's trying to find the actual drill bit that fits the hole. And then you want to use your wood glue and then you tack these down in place so that they're very, very sturdy. And that's what we did with um, both chairs. We used wood glue and brad nails. Now he just put in one brad nail to make sure that it was nice and level. So once he leveled out the first one, then he put another one on the other side. And now he has all four of the sides put together and he's going to drill them at the same time. Now, I don't think this worked out too well. I know we had to remake a couple because of the wood grain. 
but I think he used the paddle bit to mark the hole and then he used a smaller bit to drill through and then he went back through with a larger drill bit. And now he's just cleaning up these um, holes that he already drilled just to make sure they're big enough for the bolts. So we went and bought special bolts. And um, if you remember in the last video, which I will put that up in the cards. I don't think I said that before, but I will put that up in the cards for you to go back and watch if you wanted to watch the original video. But um, the bolts that come with this have like a square. Um, I don't know, they they're square up towards the head of the bolt. And so he just drilled it through, pounded it in to make sure that the square will fit in there square. So that way the bolt doesn't move or come loose. And then to put these together, he puts a washer in between so that the um, stool part, which is actually the seat back, will move freely back and forth. And now he's just going to route out the edges of the platform, which is actually the seat or the part where the um, toddler would stand on. So he's just rounding the edges with um, a handheld router. He makes it look so easy. <laughs> And so perfect. And now he's just going to use wood glue and brad nails and tack that in place. And he's using super long brad nails. So the way he made this uh, pattern was so like everything lines up. He did tweak, he did tweak it a little bit from the original chair. There you go. He got it all cut out and put together. I did help though. I just want you to know I did help. Now the only thing he has left to do is put in this little dowel rod. So instead of having two dowel rods, we only had to use one. Um, and that's one of the tweaks that he made. And this is just for stability, just to keep the um, chair back up or not to go you know, any further back than what it needs to go. And then once he gets the dowel rod in place, he just tacks it with another uh, couple brad nails. Now, I want to talk to you about what Viver sent me. They sent me this clothes rack, which I was like, okay, I have a room that doesn't have a very good closet. I thought, you know what? I could use it down there. But then I thought, no, I'm going to use it in my craft room. I'm going to use it to organize some of my stuff because I've been working really hard on organizing my craft room. And so now I'm just showing you what I've been doing. Okay. Vivor sent me this clothes rack. It's like a closet if you don't have a closet, but I am going to be using it in my craft room. So I'll put a picture in to show you like how you could use it, but this is how I'm using it. This is what I'm going to show you. So my husband put this together. Um, it took him about 20 minutes. This is like I don't know, he raised the shelf. It's got three shelves, one, two, and one on the top, which I don't have anything up there because I have low ceilings in my craft room, but it does have two bars. So one of those bars is supposed to go down here in the middle, but I wanted both of them up there because I have too much stuff down here um, loaded on my cart. So, um, and I also put carpet on the top 
so that I can put my machines up here and they won't get caught or anything like that. And I can turn them on and use them right here on the cart. I also moved all my wreath forms here. I got those little S hooks from Dollar Tree. My husband bent them so that they would all um, line up so they would hang properly. And then I just staggered them so that they would have a little bit more room. So my wreaths are over here. Um, I also used a hanger to put some large stencils. These are um, those couture. I don't know what they're called. I've never used them. You can see they're brand new. Never opened them, bought them, have not used them. I have a whole bunch of them. Anyway, never used them. Uh, Roy Cycle decoupage paper. This is how I'm storing mine. You can easily flip through to see what you have. And I just bought these, I believe from either Accidental Art Maker or Milton's Daughter. I cannot remember. Um, got these decoupage papers. Did not get that Ouija board done for Halloween, but it's okay. There's always next year, right? Um, I have my IOD paint inlays. I don't know why I keep dropping the camera. Um, but anyway, I hung them like this on these kind of hangers which I just donated a whole bunch. I'm gonna have to go back and buy them again so I can use them on this. So there's that and here's some more uh, rice paper, decoupage paper. And then I have all of these stickers from Dollar Tree and I have them here so I can easily thumb through, see what I got and um, use them up. And then I have my Cricut mats. Oh my gosh, I love this for my Cricut mats because you know, these long ones here, you just never have a place to store them. They're just so long. Anyway, um, yeah, all my Cricut mats, uh, my X-Tool mats. I have some other bulky wreath forms on the side and some grapevine also hanging down here on the side. This big old mamma jamma fit under here. I got my flowers, my wood rounds, and then I hung some wreaths on the side. It comes with two of these hook hook things. It has four hooks on either side. Um, I haven't used any of them. And then I have this little caddy that I got from Timu that is not very sturdy. Um, I zip tied it, but you can't put anything heavy in it, so. I don't know how long that's going to stay there, but anyway, I thought I was going to put some stuff in there, but you can't put anything heavy in it. So anyway, there's that, but I love this rack. It's got two locking wheels on one side and you can easily move it around. So I have this pretty loaded down right now and I've been moving it all over my craft room. I am just not sure where it's going to stay right now, but um, there it is and I still have room for more. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. All right, I will have a link for you down below in my description box where you can look this up on Amazon and I believe they are on sale right now, less than 80 bucks. So if you have people coming for the holidays, this may be a good alternative to give them some closet space. All right, now back to this DIY. We're going to finish this baby up. Okay, so I am just using the wood filler and I'm going back in and filling all the holes where the brad nails are and any imperfections in the wood. That was just an imperfection. I didn't like it. So then once I get um, all the wood filler done and it dries, I go back over it with my little finger sander and I do sand the entire surface of this little chair. And now remember, we're making two of these and um, I go over every inch of these and I do 
the feel test. So if it's not smooth, then I sand and sand and sand. But I tried to sand them after we cut them out just to give them like a light sanding because I knew I was going to have to sand the whole surface. Now, because these are for babies, you want to make sure that they're smooth. I've never made anything like these before, but these were super cool. And um, we actually had to go back and buy more pine boards to cut the sides out again because the original design had several holes in it and it just wasn't necessary. I'm hoping to make some more of these um, here in the next few weeks, right before Christmas, to put in my booth. Because I think these would go over pretty well. I mean, they're super cute. All right. So um, we are going to be using golden oak. And uh, she did not want these. The viewer that wanted these uh, stools, she did not want these painted. She just wanted them uh, plain. And so um, she just wanted them stained. I guess they're not plain, but she just wanted them stained. Um, very simple. And um, she had two grandbabies. And so we made two chairs. And I made sure to take them apart. And I stained every inch, and I think they just came out beautiful. I went over, I went over these uh, twice because uh, they were a little light. I didn't want them too light, but I also didn't want them too dark. And from what she told me, the babies just absolutely love them. They were birthday presents, and. Um, I am so happy. These, these actually turned out really good. <laughs> like they were super cute and uh, so sturdy. I told my husband that um, we need to make a new one for Mila. Like I love the one that I, that I flipped, but I like the new ones more. <laughs> the ones that we handmade. I like them more. So these were pretty easy to get back together. So I just took them apart, stained them, put them right back together, let them, um, let them dry. And then I did go over and lightly sand them because once you stain them, it kind of raises the wood grain. And so you want to sand them again. And then I put a second coat of stain after they were dry and I sanded them down. So I stained, sanded, stained. Now here is the final reveal. Look how adorable these little stools, chair, whatever you want to call it, turned out. Anyway, I love them. And I love that I got a special request and that I was able to uh, take care of her and her grandbabies for their birthday. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.